Good afternoon. I don't know if I want to speak English or Korean to you guys, because um, there are many Koreans here instead of many uh, compare, uh, instead of uh, Americans. But what, what I would like to have is that I would like to um, discuss um, uh, from Shinhan Bank first. The Shinhan, Shinhan Bank, Jung Seok Lee has been in the job in the big data analysis for years, and he has been doing um, on the job. Uh, experience, so he will give us very big, uh, uh, very um, good uh, details about big data analysis. When it comes to big data analysis, what we have to see, realize is that fintech is about big data analysis. We are fintech. The you know prosperity of uh, fintech will be largely dependent on you know the ability of theirs to um, to analyze that big data. In that sense, we are, you know, big data is very closely related to fintech industry, and that's why we are discussing big data here. Uh, let's um, give big hands to Mr. Lee jong Seok from Shinhan Bank, and let's listen his presentation first. Shall we give big hands to him? 네, 큰 박수 부탁드리겠습니다. Good afternoon. Uh, actually, before start my presentation, uh, one thing I tell you, um, I was request to do my presentation in English, but uh, I'm Korean. So if you have any question, uh, you can use Korean to me. Um, let me introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Jong Sung Lee, and I'm in charge of a big data center of Sinan Card. Today, I want to talk about the leading changes that big data makes in financial services. Maybe most of you wonder why number one card companies start big data right after the world go into the market. In order to the great company, we believe that we have to provide the real happiness to our customers when they use our card. So, we need to understand when and how our customer feel happy. That's the reason why Shinan Card start Big Data. Shinan Card already own the Big Data, which generated every day from our 22 million customer and 2.7 million merchant. Using this source of Big Data, we tried two new challenges, one for public goods, and the other one for our internal business goods. As public goods, we provide analytical insight for public institution to create, to develop data-driven policies. But in this presentation, I want to tell you about our effort to adopt big data to our core business for better performance and customer Satisfactions. In this first slide, I am gladly to introduce Code9 as our new product development and marketing platform. See the left side of the slide, the new product development. In order to understand customer one by one, we utilize clustering algorithm to capture the spending patterns of 22 million customers. As an analytical result, we found the amazing fact that there are nine codes that uniquely represent the propensity to consume of every man and woman, respectively. Based on this code nine, we launched three new cards, such as 23.5, S9, and Sinan Future Plans. Until now, they have been issued 1.9 billion. Normally, when the new card is issued in the market, just 0.2 million people can say that the new product is successful in the market. So compare the numbers. Soon, we realized that Code 9 could be used as a marketing platform. When we cooperated with LG Electronics and LF Fashions for target marketing project. We simply match Code 9 with the electronics and theme style theme of fashion 
for target marketing. It increased the marketing hit ratio by averagely 2.8 times. We call this Code 9 Collab Marketing. We have a plan to expand participating industry and develop multilateral collab marketing by connecting more than three industries. For example, Sinan Card, LG Electronics, and LF Passion can launch marketing promotion together. That's the example of multilateral collab marketing. Next, I'm going to talk about the unstructured data analysis. There are plenty of unstructured data, such as voice record or web page posting message or social data, inside and outside of the card company. These data are never been used, but now we know that these data are very important for new product development and customer service improvement. Let's see social data analysis, the left side of the slide. For new trend in Korea, overseas direct purchase. We found three pain points through the social data analysis. The first one, customer want low card commission fee. And second one, there's a several internet shopping mall outside Korea, they don't accept Korean card. And the third one, Road delivery fee is very important even though the delivery period is long. Based on this insight, we launched Smart Global Card last year. In addition to social data analysis, we start to utilize sound to text technology and text mining algorithm for audio and text analysis. Using these new technologies and new source of data, we can reduce our customer churn rate by 20% point. The third slide. Before jumping into the topic, uh, I have one question. Uh, do you see our newspaper advertisement today for Oba Sally? No? Maybe most of you say no, so I prepared one thing. This is our card linked service CRO called Sally. The concept of Sally is very simple. It consists of four steps. The first step, we provide customized discount benefit based on the analysis of customer's code and spending pattern and new trend, etc. And then Customer just click the offers, and the offers are automatically applied to their card. At the third step, customers simply use their card without presenting any coupon, any message. At the final step, customer can see the list of discount benefit on their mobile phone. The CRO is uh, similar as the uh, social commerce or electronic wallet in terms of a coupon business. But there are two differentiate points. The first one is easy to use. No coupon, no message, and no barcode in order to get the discount benefit or any special offers. The second one is write offers. Actually, Shinan card collect all the merchants discount offers and match them to customers. So customer doesn't need to wander from site to site in order to find the right offers. The last pages, advanced analysis. Actually, advanced analysis is the uh, most difficult area for me in personally. Uh, sometimes we need to develop our own algorithm instead of using commercial software. For example, Code9. Initially, we use commercial software, but right now, we are developing our own algorithm for elaborate analysis. Also, we applied advanced analysis for flight risk and next purchase recommendations, the first flight risk. 
the customer with high price risk in order to find those customers, the comparison between past and recent dormancy is very useful. We used that information as uh, unformatted data before, but right now we change them into numbers using decision tree algorithm. As an uh, analytical visual, to you, we get the more separation between two groups, as you see in the graph, bottom of the left side. For next purchase recommendation, um, we try to combine our internal data and external data, such as weather information and personal interest or property, etc. If we make success in building this model, we can predict the next possible merchant category the customer may or spend their money. For example, the weather is rainy and the customer's uh, previous merchant category is uh, grocery and today is Friday and then the customer uh, has an interest in technology and he owns a car and then we can predict his next purchase. Maybe he are going to pay fitness by 21% or gas 12% or food 9.1%, something like that. Up to now, uh, I present four stories. Actually, there are many success and fail stories that we made last year. But uh, I have only 10 minutes to present, uh, present this. So um, if I have any chance next time, I'm going to tell you more stories. And thank you for listening to my presentation. Thank you. I'm sure he is not releasing all those uh, business secrets because of uh, the corporation that prevent him to release uh, more information. And he's, uh, effectively, he effectively said, because uh, limited time, he is um, limiting that. One question I would, I would like to ask you, Mr. Lee, is that have you ever um, needed to hope, I mean, needed to merge with another data another from another company, for example, KT or SKT? Don't you need that kind of information for that advances analysis? I, I'd probably, probably use the word, different word for that. I will probably use a predictive analysis. When you predict someone's um, you know, purchase in advance, probably you need to merge with the GPS code, GPS information. G GPS information is not with your cards, but GPS information is rather telecom information. So what you, from looking at your um, you know, presentation, I was under, under the impression that did you need to uh, merge with uh, another set of data such as you know, KT Telecom or SKT Telecom offering the data to you? Actually, uh, we don't use the, uh, the data from the other industry right now. But uh, as I told you at the very beginning of the uh, presentation, um, in public sector, uh, we try to combine our data to um, roaming data from SK Telecom using the uh, GPS information. Uh, but the problem is that uh, the GPS information, in order to use GPS information, we have to uh, divide the area geometrically. It is very difficult. It takes a lot of time for both two companies. So we just match that uh, information, our information, uh, based on the uh, Dong, in uh, maybe um, the Myeongdong or Jangandong, something like that. But that information is, that area is too big to get some detail inside uh, from combined data. So uh, SK Telecom and um, us, uh, and we uh, try to uh, divide the reason for smaller and smaller. But there is uh, some limitation because of uh, government regulation. It's regulation issue, right? right? Um, he, he made an answer very long, but let me you know, summarize what he has said. Yes, he needs to have someone else's data, and he, he tried. 
but the regulation was there. He was not able to make a uh, utilization. Ut made, uh, he was not able to utilize it uh, because the granul granularity was too big. That granularity was offered by the SK Telecom, whoever Telecom. You know, that uh, regular regularity was very big because uh, regulation, the government regulation was there to prevent uh, telecom people to offering better data to them. So at this time, what we want to do is that we want to um, put the questionnaire survey on top. So we'll, we'll, in this, at this time, we are going to make a um, you know, survey. Uh, can you put uh, my survey questions over there? Amudomna? Where's um, where's the people here? Give me my questions, <laughs> survey questions. Come on, guys. Nobody's here. Okay, good. Um, when you come with this um, big data issue, what we have is that we are we are getting into the situation that data trading is needed. Is it is the case that Kate um, or Korea Telecom or SK Telecom? they have to somehow offer the data to someone else, such as Shinhan Bank, so that they can utilize the data. Now the question is, uh, you know, in Korean situation, we are totally blocked. There's no legal trading is possible here in Korea. So um, the question, first question, first question is that, um, do you, let me see. Um, the, let's go to the se second question first. <laughs> Are, do you, uh, you know, this, so it's, do, do you think uh, data trading is is a, uh, is needed to be allowed here in Korea or not? So that's the question that we are going through. So um, you know, currently the first answer, the current system we have is that uh, we don't, you know, Korean government just stops anyone, anyone doing the data trading. That's the first answer, is the current system. Second answer is that, you know, um, if uh, the identification is provided, it'll, it may be permitted, it may be allowed. That's the second question. You know, given that, once again, that's, uh, that condition is given that the the identification is possible. Well, we are going to you know discuss that be the identification later on. So third one is that um, you know as in USA case. Uh, oh no, actually not. It is not the USA case. But um, you know if you agree with the gov with the the company says SK Telecom. You know, we, I agree that I, I, I want to have my data to be traded. And if you agree that you, uh, that, you know, SK Telecom, you, you, will say, you, will, you want to say, okay, that data trading is okay as long as the customers want to trade a data. That's a, a third answer. Fourth answer is that, you know, without, you know, personal, um, you know, agreement, Data trading has to be allowed here in in this country. That's the American United States way. In, in America, uh, United States, that uh, data trading is allowed. So if you go to the your go to your web um, go to your um, handful cell phones and go to the website, then you will be able to um, you know uh, uh, cast your vote. So that's the second question. One que another question is, what do you what do you think about data pro uh, private information protection here in Korea? The question is uh, the answer is that uh, is it too much? It is too extreme. And that's you know that's your uh, that's a first question. And second question is uh, it is okay at the moment? It is good. And third one is um, it is just. We have too much. We have a protection here, but it is there is not no you know, real thing there. But there is no uh, there is only the ultimate purpose. It doesn't give anything, but it uh, it uh, just pr tr uh, it um, you know uh, pretends it protects protects the personal information. Yet it doesn't. 
that's the third question. I mean, third answer. Fourth answer is that we don't. We have uh, the in pr protection, private information pr protection. As long when it goes uh, big data and all that, the protection is you know just we we are seeing too little is from being protected here. That's the answer. Can you go uh, cast your um, vote here? 네, 지금까지 쉰세 분께서 응답해 주셨는데요. 조금 더 참석을 해 주시기 바라겠습니다. 5초까지 카운트하고 마감 결과를 발표하겠습니다. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 네, 결과가 보여주세요. 네, 3번 형식적이고 실질적인 보호가 없다는 의견이 26분으로 가장 많았고 또 네, 두 번째 질문에 대해서는 비식별화를 전제로 허용해도 좋다. 개인 데이터의 거래에 대해서 이런 의견을 표출해 주셨습니다. Thank you for your, um, your, your vote. You know, what we are going to do is that before we end the, uh, end the discussion, we are going to do the um, vote one more time. So um, we'll see, you know, what we mean to say de-identification here for this kind of question. Uh, I want to know, I want to... We, after discussion, we really want to know if you understand what it means to have de-identification. You know, actually what it is, is that the financial, I mean, um, the financial authorities of, of, of this, uh, this government tend to think that uh, de-identification can be possible. And that is a misleading, a misleading, a misleading concept, a misleading understanding of the issues. We are going to discuss that. Uh, we are going to discuss uh, the identification a little bit about it later on. And um, you know what we want to have is that we want to have a misunderstanding of the people. You know, trying to um, trying to mixing the ideas of authentication and identification. Hopefully, we can have that. You know, you understand identification and authentication at the end. Then we are, I will, will leave uh, the open question for you to decide uh, those questions which side, which will you you choose as an answer at the end. So um, that we'll leave that at the moment. What we are going to do is that we are going to introduce uh, Mike. Mike is. I uh, will introduce the panels. Excuse me. We'll introduce the panels. Um, let's go with uh, Anat first. Anat is, um, you know, professor at the Korea University, Korea, Un Korea Deakyo, Korea University. She has been teaching at the Korea Korea University uh, for the last ten years, and she is uh, an expert of a, of a big data analysis. She will, so she will give us, a, you know, good insight of of the big data when it comes to big data analysis. Now, um, I, will, I, will, I would like to introduce Mike, Mike Hong. Mike is a financier and he has, he's an um, angel investor here in Korea. And he has been, you know, uh, he has been specialist for big data and, and financial analysis when it comes to, you know, um, financial big data. He is the one who will give uh, answers for those areas. Um, so um, before we, uh, uh, we discuss anything further, let's, um, let's uh, ask um, you know, Mike about um, advantages of using big data. You know, what we have is that we, when it comes to big data and fintech, you see p fintech is kind of strange industry because we have small startups to big corporations such as Apple and Google, and they seem to have different set of data. And on the other hand, as you have seen, those you know, banks and card companies, they seem, they seem to have different set of data. Of, of course, you know, um, Mr. Lee, Jong Seok um, Lee actually discussed the, you know, you discussed a, a way of using, you know, social media data himself. Uh, his social media data is, is very limited and it is compared to the data that's for example, Facebook has, his data is very small compared to, you know, what other IT companies might have. But still, you know, he's, made, he's using good use of it. Now, question is um, to, to Mike, would um, big data capabilities change the landscape of competition in the financial industry, and why? Thank you, Nick. Um, 
Let me just uh, make a quick analogy about the, um, um, you know, people have been talking about the big data, um, more or less sort of um, synonymously with, with uh, words like uh, CRM or uh, ubiquitous uh, data. Um, I think the new definition of big data has uh, one new element. Um, the analogy will be a comparison to sushi. There are two types of sushi. Uh, one is a Japanese sushi and the other one is Korean style sushi. Japanese sushi usually require a bit of aging. Uh, Korean sushi is basically we call hara, which is really eat the live fish. Is your Korean value that much better than the ones that have been um, aging for a day or so? But in Japanese, um, they kind of cherish that. Um, <clears throat> I think the analogy will be the Japanese sushi will be equivalent to what we call the traditional data warehousing. Um, it, it's a data that, that, that's been stored um, and uh, it has its own value. Um, and uh, um, and uh, since they were analyzed pretty much in, in, the, in the data warehouse uh, uh, format, uh, you have a very structured analysis and, and uh, uh, results will be very much consistent with, with kind of, I think the, 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 the transactional database will be very good if you ask, if you know exactly what kind of questions you want to ask. I think that when you're trying to get the sort of the, the streaming data, uh, this is a different phase. It's not a search process, but it's more of a discovery phase. So if you don't know what to ask, you should go into the sort of what we call non-structured database space to look for the kind of questions you want to know. And you don't know what you're asking. So what you're trying to do is basically, I, I don't know what I don't know, but let me, f let me at least try to search for the answers by asking what kind of questions should I ask? So I think the big data in today's world is trying to figure out what kind of questions should I ask, as opposed to what other results I'm looking for. So I think the transaction data that we're looking for, they're looking for the results based on the set of specific questions. Whereas in the new world, we, we don't know what to ask because we don't know all the, the causal or correlations between various variables. Um, it's like this. Um, the transaction data is more like a, like a rice paddy farmers. You have your own land, so you know exactly what, to, what kind of crops you want to yield on your rice paddies. Whereas the big data field would be more like a shimani which is the looking for the natural ginseng. And so you go to mountain areas looking for this sort of very expensive, um, precious natural ginseng. That's what, I, what big data is all about. So don't ever get confused. When people say, oh, big data is just like a CRM. Well, nothing better than the data warehousing. No, it's not. Uh, if you compare yourself to farmers and shimari, you get good good sort of comparison or the Korean versus Japanese sushi. Because a lot of people think that this is just another fad, it's another trend, but it's not. It's a very different animal. Um, and that's something I want to get up front to the audience here, that we are not talking something incremental, but it's very different. We are looking at a very disruptive type of, 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 of the set of the information, and we are in a totally different world. Um, and I just want to make that kind of upfront and clear to the audience before I kind of get, get into all the benefits of the big data, why it's so good, why it's so unique about FinTech. So it is a matter of uh, personal taste that do you want to have a Japanese sushi or a Korean sushi? Japanese sushi has to be cooked for a couple of days or a couple of hours, a few hours, and Korean sushi it's not cooked, it is uh, just live. That's what Korean is looking for. So that's what he's talking about. That's a good analogy. <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, one thing that I, I have to ask to, you know, uh, Mike is that we say this, um, you know, FinTech is disruptive. And in a sense that um, this, those people, those companies, those industry in sustaining industry or sustaining technology has to be, has to feel crisis. That's what they say when they say it is disruptive. And uh, in, that, in, that, in that regards, I, I felt a bit uneasy about those people who discussed about Gumsanbuli, you see, that I was, uh, I was so uneasy about it. It is nothing they can choose. It is uh, disruptive that they are going, they, those, are those people in the conventional, traditional, sustaining 
uh, business, they have to fill the crisis. They have to they have, they have to fund it. Now the, I'm, I'm asking the question to um, to Mike. You know, once again, we say different set of data that those companies, IT companies, have different set of, set of data, and you know, banks has different set of data, and they have different set of hands. Now, Alibaba and those people will come into the banking industry, and begin doing business because it seems the the business the you, when it when we say disruptive technology disruptive technology means in the beginning it will be very you know it, it is not up to the expectation it is below the market expectation they begin with but soon or later what they are going to do is that they will, they will be powerful enough to disrupt everything that's what it says when we say disruptive in a technology. So I'm asking to Mike, do you see this disruptive technology uh, coming? And if if it is the case, do you th do you see disruptive um, you know technology will be powerful enough to change the landscape of the competition landscape of a banking industry? Uh, if you so, in what degree? I think that a disruption is not just limited to the banking sector or financial services, but actually is already affected media, retail, uh, travel, uh, hotel. Um, I think if I ask audience here, when's the last time you ever booked hotel through your travel agent? You're probably gonna, oh, I forgot. That's such a long time ago, right? Uh, if I ask when's the last time um, you booked your uh, car rental through your travel agency, you probably forgot when's the last time, maybe 20 years ago. Um, I think that the big data is, is the, basically the manifestation of the, the changing landscape in the business community here, um, not just in Korea, but global-wide. Um, 25 years ago, um, I remember the biggest sort of the, uh, the competitive differentiation factor was, could be coined as just one term, Intel Insight, right? If you have Intel chips inside your hardware, it, 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 it differentiated your product from the rest, right? Because you got the, the 486, you got the Pentium, Centrium, right? But then if you buy new smartphones nowadays, do you care whether the, the processor inside a smartphone carries Samsung's or uh, Qualcomm's uh, Snapdragon or the uh, Texas Instruments OMAP? Nobody cares, right? You may care a little bit about maybe the screens are uh, AMOLED or LCD screen, but the hardware has become basically commodified. You could commoditize or commodified. And then the software has emerged as a new sort of uh, competing um, um, uh, field. But even that now with open source software, now if you look at the IBM, if you look at Oracle, right, they're laying off tens of thousands of employees, right? What does that tell you? The, the traditional software model is also being disrupted because guys like Facebook and Google are offering their services for free, their softwares, right? Google Docs, right? Facebook will open up their entire data centers to the outside, say, hey, take a look at our data centers, right? They open up their entire platform for third-party developers to develop their softwares. So the software model is being marginalized. So IBMs of the world are becoming uh, extinct, or you know, I think you know, they, are, they are basically um, uh, having a very uphill battle. So the next frontier is what then? I think the next frontier is big data. That's what matters. That's why Facebook and Google are offering their software for free, because they want to access you. They want to access the information about you, your hobbies, your likes, your pattern of behavior, your, your, your locations. They want to grab as much information as possible. That's the, the next frontier in the whole uh, competitive landscape. I think that's why this whole disruption in banking sector is all about big data. Can, you can summarize everything in one word. Big data matters. And so if you think about if Korea is behind the big data, because we've been talking about we don't have a lot of data scientists, I know we are catching up here. So you, you know, before it gets too late, we better start sooner rather than worrying about all these regulations, how it's going to affect, because it's going to affect not just banking sector, but whole Korean economy. So it's not, it's not a choice anymore. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a must, in my view. And I think 
I think that uh, you know, the, the regulators and the policymakers and government leaders, as well as academia and business people here, should feel that we, we, don't, we don't have time, much time left. So we really should accelerate the process. Should I, should I say amen to it? But anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, let's go. Um, that's, uh, that leads to a question to Anat, because Anat is a big, big data specialist. Um, Anat, uh, which institutions in the United States are the ones investing in big data and how they, do it, how they are doing? Okay. I actually have a presentation. Uh, you're going to uh, press that button. Okay. Oh. I actually have a PowerPoint slide presentation. Uh, yeah. Can you please um, have her presentation? How things are going in yeah. the United States. Press this button. Oh, oops, I think this one. This one. Uh -huh. okay. Okay. We got okay. it. We got it. So um, I'm going to be a lot faster, and <laughs> um, mostly because English is my native language, so I can speak very, very fast. If I'm too fast for the interpreters, please um, let me know. Uh, basically, in the United States right now, there is a gap. Most organizations say that big data is, is it, just like Mike here said. But when you look at actual implementations, only 37% of current financial institutions, banks, insurance companies, and whatnot, actually are deploying big data. So of course the question is why? Um, I don't know if you can see that, but the biggest problem that banks in the US are facing is the issue of silo. Most banks in the United States are old. They started in the 1800s. They have huge legacy systems sitting on legacy machines like IBM mainframes. Um, and they're having difficulties combining all of that. Also, US banking industry went through a number of mergers and acquisitions. So now they're looking at trying to combine data from um, this bank and that bank and whoever they merged from. Um, so that's one reason. This is, was my cat. Uh, why is my cat here? Because I actually managed to create an identity for my cat and I used to get credit card offers for my cat. So they're saying basically that 25 to 30 percent of the data in the United States is not clean. Now we're going to talk about the national identification system in Korea. US doesn't have it. So if I change the spelling of my name by one letter, the bank doesn't know that I'm the same person. So I actually played this, that game. I changed my name on some form. I, I just write a B instead of a V. And I, within two to three weeks, I get junk mail and offers from a whole bunch of companies with the misspelled name. So there are issues with cleaning the data. I don't know how Shinhan does it. I'm not sure. But in the U.S., that is a big problem. And yes, we have a credit card for our cat. Well, the cat is dead, but the credit card is there. Um, because the 2008 financial crisis also created a lot of problems in the U.S. So companies are investing more money in risk management, privacy, and cybersecurity. And right now, big data is being assigned lower priority. Um, so this is a report uh, sponsored by Intel, and they found that uh, about half of big data projects in the United States were not towards marketing, uh, which is what Shinhan was describing, but more to comply with risk regulations, uh, SEC regulations, policies, SOCs, which is Sarbanes-Oxley, and so on. So. Um, the, this is the state of affairs in the United States. Now, to answer your, your question, one of the biggest success stories is Capital One. Now, you have to understand that for Americans, Capital One was not exactly the most reputable credit card in the world. For a long time, it was considered um, something you should not get. But somehow, they managed to uh, improve their reputation. They're now the fifth largest uh, banking company in the United States. Um, and they are known as the leader in the use of big data. They actually use it for targeted, customized product offerings. 
So what they do is they come up with a very targeted offering, not nine groups, but 30,000 different types of, of potential groups. And they start by very small scale. They will go in and try a very, very small scale of people. And if it works, then um, they, they offer it to a larger audience. So for example, I have friends who travel a lot. They have Capital One because they get uh, no overseas charges, for example. Um, Capital One is developing in-house data analytics as well as purchasing. They've acquired two companies that can strengthen their data analytics. Um, one of them was actually a company that had data and then they acquired Bundle Corporation, which is a data aggregator. So they're investing, their strategic investment is going towards capital one, towards uh, big data. Um, US banks and credit card issuers can also trade information, something that is not quite legal in Korea. So this is a whole industry that banks and, and credit card companies are going after. It's expected to reach $1.7 billion by the end of this year. It's growing by uh, exponentially. Um, so some examples, MasterCard in their first quarter reporting for 2014, reported the revenues from sales of data grew by 22%, while revenues from payment processing, which is just the regular credit card revenue, grew only by 14%. Uh, American Ex uh, Express actually has a subsidiary called Insights, and basically what they're doing is they are doing analytics consulting. So they're analyzing data and they're targeting direct marketers. So they're not using the data themselves. They're actually trading the data. We don't usually say sell, we say trade. Trading the data with um, other companies. So this is just um, another thing that I wanted to comment because of the presentation by Shinhan Bank is that in the US, push technology, meaning saying you one of these categories and I'm gonna give you a credit card specifically for that, is not as common as pool technology. So banks are saying, we're gonna give you points, and you do with the points whatever you want. So it's very individualized, okay? So I can use my points to buy concert tickets, I can use my points to buy an expensive purse, or I can use, or I can get cash, why is it not working? Or I can just get cash. And American Express is giving me anywhere between two to 5% cash on my purchases. That's a lot. Makes me very happy. Um, and then the final thing is globalization. The Korean market is not growing. If nothing else, it's shrinking. So one question that I think we all have is what would happen, the, the pie is not growing. So how are you going to increase revenues? How are you going to increase profits? So. Um, one example is Citibank. Um, Citibank is a very global company and their approach to things is globalization. So they opened their first R&D center in Israel in 2011. Since then they've opened uh, a data intelligence um, center and a FinTech accelerator. Why not in the United States? Because they're not interested in the data in the United States. They're interested in what is going on somewhere else. They want someone that can think out of the box and think differently because everybody's already doing the US. What's the point? So Citibank to gain competitive advantage is going somewhere else. And was I fast? I hope I was fast. <laughs> no? Uh-oh, sorry. Uh, we can see 감사합니다 at the end, so wonderful, wonderful. it was a wonderful um, comment about, uh, uh, presentation about Anat. You know, Anat made uh, three, three points um, uh, to, as a, in, his pres in her presentation, where it is um, one thing he, I noticed is in USA, the banks or card companies are doing raw data trading and they make more, more money from data trading. That was something that we began with um, as a, asking questions to you. Is it trading data 
can we make a trading data as a, as an industry here, uh, in a totally different industry here, so um, so that we can have uh, you know something uh, make um, that banks can can take advantage of. Now the second question was pull technology, and third one is go global. The advice to to you know the fintech here is that he wa she wanted to say go global, go global. That is one thing that he, she wanted to say. Um, you know that naturally leads to a question to uh, Mr. Lee, Jong Suk Lee. So um, is Shinhan has have a plan? Does Shin Shinhan has a have a plan to yes, go to the, global? Uh, we have a uh, branch in Kazakhstan, and uh, we have a plan to uh, go out globally, but uh, not the uh, card business. Actually, uh, not credit card business, the other business. So um, you know what I, I asked the question only because it is um, you know existing bank um, uh, conventional style of banks being there being very conservative it is more natural for those fintech go target global first and they will they will have to be successful in L, in global market because Korean market is so much small if you think about it for fintech companies so they be, have to begin with a global uh, global market first, global going global first. That's uh, what I ask, um, wanted to ask. Now going back to um, Mike, with the regulations and, and privacy issue, and it, it, this uh, because data 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 trading naturally leads to us to go to trade data trading. Uh, Korean government, um, you know, Mike, Korean government uh, authorities have been highly protective about privacy data. You know, we begin with a questionnaire here, you know, uh, is Korean government is protecting, trying to, to, trying to protect the data really, really hard to, you know, not to get leaked out. You know, of course we get data you know, and personal information, privacy information be, being leaked out almost every, day, every, every year, once every year. So that, you know, knowing that now, um, it is illegal here in Korea trading any kind of data that could infer to identify individuals. The problem is only small number of data needed, data uh, dots needed to reveal or infer individuals. It means the government must block almost all the data being traded. This uh, could potentially stop the entire industry requiring big data and its capabilities. We, we are asking to Mike because Mike said big data is a must. And we are going against them um, to it because government regulation says, no, you cannot trade the data. Your big data should not be traded. And without being traded, how can you make a big data a must here in the, in the country? Well, <clears throat> if the regulations um, are in place as it is today, it will basically help companies like Google and Facebook and Amazon to eat up Korean market. So the choice is very clear. If you don't do it, they'll do it for us. So as a consumer, I would just end up using Amazon or the Google um, or the Facebook instead of um, G Market or or Shibil Bonji or Shibil Bonga and or the uh, Cacao or the um, neighbor. And at least the neighbor and Cacao pay taxes, right? They pay income taxes. Um, Google and, and as far as I know, Google Korea doesn't pay any corporate income tax here because they got the very unique uh, uh, tax um, uh, specialist to arbitrage all the tax regulations and, and pay minimum tax here. So as far as I know, the Google doesn't pay any taxes here, even though they generate billions of dollars of income here and just on, on Google Play alone here in Korea. So the choice is very clear for the Korean government. If you don't do it, um, they will do it, and they're not, they're outside of the Korean jurisdiction. So um, in, in the world we are living in the FTA where the playing field is supposed to be equal, right? So the, what affects us in Korea should affect them, but if you are taking home, home players at a disadvantage relative to the foreign players, I think the policy makers are basically working for then Google and Facebook as opposed to for us then? Is that, is that what's end up being? So um, as a taxpayer, I would be very unhappy about it, right? Because I think, uh, you know, 
I, I'm, I'm on their customers in, in a certain extent because I'm paying their salaries, right? So um, that's, that's why I see. Uh, in terms of the um, regulations, let me just add, for, instance, for example, current regulations um, under the current regime, if you are collecting information such as the um, IP address or the USIM um, uh, numbers or GPS information, they're all deemed to be identifiable. Um, and, and to me, if you start treating any kind of information as identifiable, uh, even machine code numbers on your smartphones, um, then I don't know how you're going to develop a big data industry um, on a global scale <laughs> because, uh, you know, Shinan card even can work with uh, telco guys in, in coming in with the personalized customized services for you or they will make, a, I mean, think about all the fintechs. They're supposed to, to make the capital available to the uh, small, medium-sized enterprise companies or individuals with uh, less than stellar credit ratings. In order for them to make those rending decisions, they need to come up with uh, some data for them to arrive at those information decisions. And without those information, how can they arrive at those decisions? Um, and I just, to me, that's a non-starter. So he's basically saying big data. When you say big data industry, don't say big data and regulation together. It's just, it doesn't work. Um, you know, this begs ask a question to Anat. Um, you know, uh, Mike, does that need to, does not mean to say privacy protection? You know, this, may, this have, may have misled many people. You know, Mike does not mean to say priv privacy protection is not important. It is very, very important that to be protected. But, once again, uh, you know, um, that protection is a must, but big data has to be traded. You know, once again, it is um, here in Korea, Korean government does not know to separate the ideas of identification from authentication. They don't understand those two issues. They, are, they, they tend to mix those two together and they believe ident blocking ident identifier will block all those uh, you know, privacy information from being leaked. And that's totally wrong. So I'm, I hope uh, there are some you know, experts there in the government and actually it's clarifying those things. Now, um, you know, uh, to, that's, this begs a question to uh, Anat. You know, trading raw data and, and priv you know, um, personal information is being uh, traded in, in USA with, uh, for, uh, freely. So when it is um, you know, doing that, do you feel you know, do you feel that is uh, totally wrong or is there any movement that stops the information that is identifiable being treated to, be, to stop that? Do you have any movement there? Um, most, am I on? Yeah, you're on. <laughs> uh, most people, you know, US is a really big country and there are a lot of different opinions, but the truth of the matter, it's a market-driven economy. So whatever is good for business is good for the country. And the key is you empower the customers. So you, you let customers decide what they want to do. If I don't want my information traded, I can opt out. I can say I don't want it. I don't have to use Facebook if I don't want Facebook to, to, be, to trade my information. But you can't get in, in the U.S., the government is not involved in business. Uh, government, government regulations cannot interfere with business moving forward. Business is important. Profits are important. So does that answer your question? Right. That's a, that's a good answer. You know, um, once again, uh, I will go for, for those Koreans. When I say de-identification, it is uh, in Korean, it is 비식별화입니다. 비식별화. When I say de-identification is 비식별화입니다. 그좀 확실하게 말 이제 말씀을 드리고 가겠습니다. Many propose to adapt de-identification process to make big data anonymous. Technically speaking, to make data totally de-identifiable is impossible. Some people do not know that this, you know, 
That's why government needs an expert just know what, it, what they do. De-identification is not possible, period. You know, so the thing is, the Korean government say, oh, we'll make a big data de-identifiable and make that tradable in data exchange. That is totally wrong idea. So that has to be cleared. Now that goes to the, the question um, is that, you know, um, to, I'm, I made an answer and I make a question. This, this makes me so, feel so bad. <laughs> so let me ask a question to Anat. Is that um, as an expert, the Korean government assumes that de-identified big data may be available and useful. What is your opinion on, the, on well, this? I can tell you that I'm more of an expert in cybersecurity and hacking than I am in uh, big data, and there is no such thing as de-identifiable data. Everything is identifiable. We have, in, in big data, we collect information, uh, historical information, and, and so many points of information, and I think we had a discussion before, we agreed that three or four points is enough to identify a person. Um, so there is no real de-identifiable data. And again, the key is to let customers decide what they want to do. So that's a that's a wonderful answer. Let's go to um, Jong Seok at this, Mr. Lee. Um, because uh, what we have now is that we've, uh, we have a few questions that uh, pre-registers um, you know, listed um, when they when at the present uh, pre registration time. So let's go to a question to Jong Seok. When you analyze credit card information, do you need to use sensitive personal information, which may be used against the person? Um, do you do you use um, priv some private information that could be go against the people? Uh, this could be a controversial issue, so um, I'm going to use uh, in Korean. So uh, one of you guys uh, translate what I'm saying to Professor Anat is more competent. Uh, 저희가 실제적으로 그 카드사에서 저희 자체적인 그 니즈만 가지고 분석할 때는 uh, 개인 정보가 필요가 없습니다. Uh, 저희 자체적으로 개인 정보는 따로 보관돼 있고 저희도 이 고객을 비식표라 해서 뭐 고객 1번, 고객 2번, 고객 3번 이런 식으로 저희도 관리를 하기 때문에 어떤 뭐 마케팅 타겟 마케팅을 위해서 뭐 고객 정보가 필요하지는 않은 상황입니다. 그래서 어, 실제로 저희가 아까도 말씀드린 뭐 CRO나 이런 걸 분석할 때 있어도 어, 고객 1번의 스펜딩 패턴이 이런 거다라고 저희가 분석을 하는 거지. 뭐, 뭐 A라는 어떤 특정 하신 분들이 뭐 스펜딩 패턴을 이렇게 이렇게, 이렇게 쓰더라. 그는 저희 내부 직원도 모르는 상황입니다. 그래서 어, 그런 부분은 좀 없다라고 말씀드릴 수 있겠습니다. If I may, I will, you know, um, shed a, the light in another perspective um, to his answer. He's saying is that his system is not capable of, you know, analyzing to the individual level. Later on, if the computing power is there, I'm sure they will do it, you know, because it is going, it is going to be useful. Now, uh, then let's go to the Next question. Um, in offering fintech products and services, where is, uh, there is a, where is a fine line for legal versus illegal collections and their uses of data from your perspective in Korean legal system? Um, what, how, would you, how would you separate the legal, collecting the, when you collect the data, Mr. Lee? collect the data, what is legal data and what is illegal data? Do you have any, uh, there is a fine line there? 그 핀테크라는 게 이제 금융하고 IT가 합쳐지다 보니까 문제가 뭐냐면 금융은 금융 나름대로의 개인정보보호법이 따로 있습니다. 제가 지켜야 될게. 그 다음에 그 통신, ICT 쪽의 통신도 이제 통신 통비법이라 해서 이제 미래부 쪽에서 지정한 또 별도의 법을 따라야 됩니다. 그런데 어, 양쪽 법을 보면 어, 저희 쪽에 있어서는 어, 개인정보 보호 대상이 아닌데 어, 통신 쪽에서는 개인정보 보호 대상일 수 있는 그런 데이터들이 있습니다. 그래서 어, 그런 것들을 지금 어떤 식으로 어, 그 해서 조이닝을 할까 하는 부분에 있어서 아주 그 디테일한 레벨로 내려가서 개인 단위로서 데이터를 합치는 거는 지금 현재 불가능합니다. 그래서 저희가 이제 그 지역 아까도 말씀드렸지만 지역 동 단위로 지금 데이터를 합치고 있는데 어 합치다 보니까 별로 이렇게 데이터 합치고 나서 
데이터로부터 나, 나오는 인사이트가 굉장히 지금 적은 상태고요. 그래서 이게 합법이다 불법이다라고 그 핀테크 쪽에서는 어느 누구도 감히 지금 얘기할 수 없지 않을까라고 생각을 좀 하고 있습니다. Okay, our time has uh, expired. You know, what we want to do is that we want to have one more survey to the questions. And can you make the questions up? And um, 저기 좀 질문지 좀, 좀 올려주실래요? Let's, um, let's make a one more, one more um, you know, voting here. Would you, could you please um, cast your vote to the uh, survey questions? Survey question. 네, 현장 투표 용지 한번 다시 한번 띄워 주시길 바라겠습니다. 세 번째 질문 하겠습니다. 그런 거 없는데 첫 번째, 두 번째. 네. 첫 번째, 두 번째 question. 아까 올렸던 거 아, 처음. 아까 했던 걸 다시 할까요? 자, so what do we want to have is that big data, big data 개인 분석, 개인 정보가 필요할 때가 많은데, 자, 우리나라 개인 정보에 대해서 이제는 어떻게 생각하십니까? 과도하게 보호되고 있습니까? 아니면 적당합니까? 분석적, 어, 형식적이고 시, 실질적인 보호는 없다. 너무 적게 보호되고 있다. 지금 이 질문은 사실은 트레이딩에 아예 못하게 트레이딩에 아예 못 되게 만들어 놓은 거에 대해서 이제 포커스를 하는 겁니다. 사실 트레이딩에 아예 못 되는데 실제로 실질적인 것들은 별로 없고 별로 도움이 안 되는 그런 법. 규제가 너무 많습니다. 요거 하시고요. 그 다음에 다음 퀘스천 다음 퀘스천 음, 개인 데이터 거래는 어떻게 생각하십니까? 내가 어, 미국에서는 그냥 자유롭게 거래가 돼요. 그런데 우리나라는 아예 거래가 안 되게 만들어 왔습니다. 어떻게 생각하십니까? 계속해서 거래를 다 막아놔야 된다. 절대로 허용하면 안 된다. 두 번째는 비식별을 전제로 허용해도 된다. 이게 비, 아까는 비식별화를 허용, 전제로 허용해도 된다 그랬는데 제가 우리 아나 씨나 제가 디스커션 하면서 비식별화라는 건 없다 그렇게 말씀드렸습니다. 비식별화가 불가능하다. 근데도 비식별을 계속 해야 됩니까? 또 마지막으로는 이제 개인이 동의하면 포괄적으로 허용해도 좋다. 네 번째는 미국식으로 동의 없이도 허용해도 좋다. 이거 좀 한번 저기 좀 해주세요. 네, 다시 한번 시도를 해보겠습니다. 그동안 생각이 어떻게 바뀌셨는지 궁금한데요. 잠시 뒤 5초 카운트하고 마감하도록 하겠습니다. 자, 하나, 둘, 셋, 넷, 다섯, 네, 마감하겠습니다. 지금까지 43분께서 응답을 해주셨는데요. 결과값 보여주세요. 네, 3번 형식적이고 실질적인 보호가 없다는 응답이 가장 많았고요. 또 과도하게 보호되고 있다는 응답이 그 다음으로 많았습니다. 다음 질문도 보여주시죠. 네, 개인 데이터의 거래는 어떻게 생각하십니까? 네, 생각이 많이들 바뀌셨습니다. 3번 개인이 동의하면 포괄적으로 허용해도 된다가 가장 많은 응답을 얻었고요. 그 다음으로 비식별화를 전제로 허용해도 좋다. 이것이 두 번째로 많은 표를 얻었습니다. 저거하고 연결돼 가지고 우리 국회에 개인 거, 개인정보보호법 보호, 통합법이 지금 계류가 되어 있습니다. 그 개인정보보호통합법이 훨씬 더 강력하게 보, 보호하는 걸로 되어 있는데요. 실질적이고 형식적이기만 한그 부분이 많습니다. 그래서 여러분들이 나중에 가시더라도 주위 분들한테 이게 왜 형식적인지 도대체 아무 이유도 없이 막그만 있는 게왜 필요한 건지 하는 것을 좀그 좀 설명을 좀 해주시면 좋겠습니다. 감사합니다. 네, 좌장을 맡아주신 이영환 교수님, 이종석 센터장님, 안한지림 호바부 교수님, 홍병철 대표님 모두 감사드립니다.